commercial ones are alcohol dye over uh, oil dyes. They're much more transparent. They soak into the wood surface well. And whether you put it on as a brush or you put it on as a sprayer, uh, makes a little difference with them. They still come out pretty well. This has lacquer on top of it, but we're gonna pass a lot of this stuff around on there. Um, this is a piece of oak and uh, done with some wood. It's, this is, I believe, Balin, maybe Balin's alcohol stain. We call it stain, it's a dye, but um, I buy trans tint. I was gonna bring the bottles, but I forgot. <coughs> Probably a couple other things I forgot too, but um, trans tint is concentrated dyes and they'll mix with just about anything. So this basically, you can make your own. All you need to do is you buy red, yellow, blue, and some black. And you can really duplicate a lot of colors. Uh, get yourself a, a color wheel. That helped me a lot to see where I could, what I had to put in there a little bit. And most of the time you want something with brown in it. And that uh, usually is red, blue, and maybe a little black with it, depending on how much you want it out of there. Darker than that. So, if you go to Hobby Lobby, you can get these little bottles of many different kinds of dichromics, uh, mica powders, and you can mix them with lacquer, you can mix them with alcohol, uh, a number of different mediums. And um, some of them are, will reflect very well when you move it around, they change colors for you and things like that. But that's, that's in the powder form. This is in a paint. These are dichromic paints. If you look at this one, you can see it's kind of a reddish look to it, but it also has some blue purple in it on that one. This one is a blue, it's a turquoise, and it has some silver in there, I'm sure, on that one. Do you catch qualified? Yeah, yeah I know you do so. it on that one. Those are about the mica powder from. Uh, Pearl X are somewhere in the six dollar range, maybe a little more now. And it's uh, for what you get. Look at the bottles, shake it, see how much is in there. Some of them are less than an ounce, I believe. Uh, they're really difficult ones to make, and some are, might be all the way up to two ounces. Does this say eight ninety nine? Pardon me. Does this say eight ninety nine? Yeah. Yeah. What's the matter? You ever buy model paint? No. Yeah, yeah, try that stuff too. Little can of testers. Yeah. Testers model paint, probably seven dollars now. I buy it in big quantity. Used to be two bucks. Huh? Yeah. When I was a kid. This one is uh, interface gold, so it looks white until you move it around, and then it has a gold tint to it on that type. So I I use a lot of that. I probably have. 25 bottles of that stuff, different colors and things. Then over at Rockler, these uh, are bigger jars. They contain quite a bit of powder in here for the price. It's anywhere from, I think, $13.95 to about $18.95, somewhere in there. But you can open them up, but be careful because it's very fine. It will float, especially the one that's called ice. You might find out you're... <laughs> Oh. Taking some of it home with you mm -hmm. on there. Um, Ray Luckup uses a lot of this. This is, it's already floating. It's called ice, and it's kind of like a glitter, but a very fine glitter. Hooey, <coughs> it's already floating around on me. Who did you unscrew the lid on this stuff? It's on my hand right now. So, but that, you put that in the, with the powder and the mix or whatever you're using it with, and you'll get some really nice uh, stuff popping off it. This one is similar, but I think it's a Pearl X in this one. And not everything works perfect for me. If I flip it over, it eh, looks like a cloudy night somewhere with the Alaska skies and up in there. But you're going to see a crack right here. And that can be a problem if you don't fill it correctly. And it's on this side. I don't think I put anything but 
uh, super glue in there. Uh, just a side note, I get I get a notification from super glue quite a bit from from Starbon super glue. I think it's the best product out there, and they now have a flexible, medium, thick that is uh, four times stronger than normal for micro uh, for uh, super glues. And it's about seventeen dollars for two ounces. So it's it's not a bargain. But if you look at type bond, it's much better than that. So you take your choice on. But uh, for what it is, that's not too bad. Unless you want to buy 16 ounces, then it's $71. So, if you use it up quick enough on that one. All right, this is another dye job. Oak uh, dyes readily with. And this is just done with a brush. You get your, your alcohol, mix your alcohol with your uh, uh, dyes. What color you want. This is mostly red here. This is not uh, tear out or anything in here. It's just. The wood was a little rotty. That's um, the reason it was cut down, I'm sure. But this is just, uh, I believe this, yeah, this is red oak here. Does the alcohol raise the grain or do anything? Not with alcohol, very little. Um, that's one of the problems with water stain. Uh, they do penetrate a little bit better water, but they, uh, they have to sand it all back down anyway. So I don't, I don't bother with any of it. And, most of the time, I would just brush it in. It'll soak it up very quick, and alcohol dries quickly. It really makes it a lot uh, easier to use compared to regular oil uh, stains and things on that. Okay, um, so now we move a little bit on, and what I want to really introduce to you tonight is poor man's spray gun. This, uh, you can, you know, this I mix these up, and I bought, I think these were about two, two and a quarter, if you buy like six of them off Amazon. Uh, now this one I believe was out of, I believe it was out of Menards. It has a little filter in the bottom of it, which you may not want when you're um, spraying um, powders in there. You mix alcohol in here with dyes, you can mix alcohol in here with powder, and spray it and it dries very quickly. The only trouble with alcohol is if you're using powders, if you rub it with your finger, it's gonna take it back off. So if you don't like it, a little steel wool and take it off and start over again. Sometimes I will seal it if I'm doing something on top of it, like printing, things like that. I will uh, use, put a sealer on it first. These bowls, let's see, yeah, this bowl, both these bowls, and the bowl we're going to play with a little bit tonight. This was burned this afternoon. Actually, a little more story here. This bowl this morning was sopping wet. It's from back room back here. I turned it yesterday. It's it's a, some of Mike's L, mm. and it it was not light. It was I mean it was it was soaking wet. How did I dry? I dried all three of these bowls this morning. I have a microwave that I talked my wife into a nice new stainless steel one, and I got the old one. Yay. And uh, if you're using a microwave, the only thing I make sure is I got one like that. Exactly. That was my daughter's. And uh, you got to get a rotating table. If you use the one like that's in the other room here, it does not rotate. You'll burn a hole right through the long grain, and it'll start smoking in there. And you better get, get it. Yeah, I, I only do it outside. I will not use my microwave in the house because I don't want to have any extra flames floating around. But um, we'll get into this texturing part of it. But there is a coat of primer. You can use black primer. You can use a white primer if you want. You can use a um, Indian dye or you can use trans tint. Any of them that, that turns it all black. You can leave it without it. It's really quite attractive to have that kind of kind of a uh, natural wood look and then black. Natural wood look like and all the grain. And these bowls here, you're gonna feel this one, the grain is, is what's going on here? Let's talk about that. This is a helm in uh, um, 
Yeah, the, the other one. We sawed all, all them down because they had to bore <coughs> beetles. Ash. Ash. Ash, thank you. Ash bore beetles uh, took care of a lot of it for us. Those are um, basically, summer wood is softer than the winter wood. It's harder. So they, they, um, they will burn quicker. So when you look at this one, when you feel it, you can tell it, it's really got some pretty deep, and that was burned once. You can burn it twice, depending on how thick it is. You don't want to burn through the bottom, but you want to make sure you got enough wood on it and uh, burn it through them that way. Um, so the winter so, wood burns faster? Pardon me? The winter wood burns faster? No, the summer, 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 summer wood. It grows. What did you and use? the other thing is, um, yeah, this one is oak. And this one is uh, ash on here. And these are both fairly tight grain on that one. But the whole, this one, that I did a couple of days ago. This one is another piece of, uh, <coughs> yeah. Elm. Elm, Ash. yeah, Elm, no, Elm. This one is oak, I believe, instead of, not ash, it's oak. Did anyway, you, they did use you, the same blue on both these. Did you use a propane torch on this? Oh yeah, yeah, we got that right here. I'll talk a little real quick okay. in a second here. But uh, notice the difference. This one, the grain is very, close, very slow growing oak. This one is the elm, it grows faster, so and so that summer wood burns deeper on that. And the grain in here is too close together. So these don't make quite as attractive. The other thing is these are all painted black before you before you put the mica powders on here. So you'll see a lot of reflection of black underneath this one depending on how you turn them and things. On that, but it's good to view them both at the same time. On that. Okay, blow torches. Blow torches have come a long way since the uh, days of white gas and the pump. Uh, most of you aren't that old, I know. Some of you are. Well, that was the plumber's. Yeah, the plumber's torch. Torch, they would heat it up and he'd lay yeah. those. Sit there and warm them up that way. These are both by Benzomatic. And this one's a little cheaper. Um, the thing is, it does not have any regulator on the back. This one you can dial down. But the nice part of it is you just pull the trigger and they light up. So it makes them much more uh, attractive to work with. You just, you're done with it, just set it down. You can't. Push the button and lock the, the, the uh, lock it on if you want to use two hands on something. But there's propane gas and there's map gas. The so map gas is pretty hot stuff. It's for yeah. melting, right, brazing, right, things right. like that. The propane will do fine on your bowls. It's not a big problem there. But you can use both. That one uh, probably close to thirty dollars now. I think for one of those. On there, but burning is another great way of texturing on that one. Um, this came out of here. This one was cored out of this one, and I did do back of this one because we can work with that tonight. But this one I didn't have the heart to do it. It had some nice sapwood feature in it. It's got like bird's eye in it, so it's been oiled. Uh, it's going to get another coat of oil in it and then probably lacquered over the top of that. So this one is it's a, pretty dry. Got a little oil left in it on that. This bowl is not brand new, but this is working with fiddle maple. And this was a, from Rockler. It's a very nice, attractive, this is a 3A and a very nice, attractive piece of um, hard maple here. And what you do with this type is you're gonna put it all black, dye, black dye. Once you have the black dye on it, you're sanding that back, or maybe a dark brown if you wanna go a little bit lighter. But uh, you're sanding that back, 
And then when you get done with that, you're putting whatever color you want over the top of it. Are you sanding with sandpaper or are you sanding with steel wool? You better. You're going to be there a long time with steel wool. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. If you don't want it just a little off, you would do that. But when you put black on here, you got to get rid of quite a bit of it to get it into the uh, raw wood. Thank you. Oh, yeah. This was probably power sanded most of it. So you're, and then hand you're sanding it mostly back to bare wood again. Most of it, yes. Anywhere you see that light color, yeah, that's bare wood to okay. show it back. So there's quite a bit of sanding back in that one. But it's a great way to do that. And there are purists who will uh, you know, do their Kentucky long rifle stock uh, in certain ways with certain dyes, certain, yeah. And they get in a whole new ballgame with that stuff. Question? What caused the streaks this way? That's just grain of the wood? Grain's going one way and the fiddle's going the other. Okay. Yeah. And again, it, it, it's, my wife won't let go of that one either. On that end. Okay, so what do you do with cracked bowls? Bowls? This is cracked. It's cracked on both sides. If you really look close, you'll see one line across the bottom here on that one. If you look on this side, it's right through there a little bit. So it's cracked, but this was painted with black primer. One of the things about black primer, is, and it was filled first. I put some, uh, I think I put epoxy in this one, colored black epoxy. And, there, and then when you prime, you know, we sand it back, prime over the top. This is fairly thick stuff. This is from uh, Duplicolor, it's for cars. So it's uh, sandable, when it dries, you can sand it back so mm -hmm. you want to smooth it out more, things like that. It, uh, I think I get this at Myers for those people in the Midwest. Myers department stores on that one. So. Now I have it painted black, and here I used a red one. I don't, I don't, yeah, there it is. A red one here, and this, the red splotches, they're basically splotches on this bowl. It spits. You got to dial it in to spit. I probably should be wearing a glove for this one. More. That, 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 that all you gotta do is pull the trigger a little bit and you get that spit. You don't want to pull all the way back. Uh, sometimes you get it that way, but probably should hand this around with a paper towel. Don't shoot it. <laughs> but that was mixed uh, dichromic powder with lacquer. You're gonna smell a little lacquer in here pretty soon. Um, if you look at the bottom here right now, you can see it sitting on there. So you're going to shake it up. I cut, I cut the nozzle that runs down inside on an angle where it wouldn't sit on the bottom and plug it up. So it's good competition. Um, but you shake it up like that. There's a spray. So this one right now is on spray. And if you want a color a bowl, put a glove on because this can get a little messy here. I'm going to do part of this bowl with just. Now that has some ice in it. Okay, so just hold on the bottom there. And a sparkle. So that's, I mean, this is $2.25, something like that. And you just saw it spray. Um, it won't always be perfect, but that is another secret of texturing with a torch. Once you burn it, it really does not show like this bowl, if you feel it, it's got a little bumpiness to it. Not much, but there's a, there's a run right there. You feel a bump there, things like that. But, um, 
Take a look at the black background on that. If you think that one's got a black in it, check this one. Same paint, same coloring, splattered over black, but not as heavy. Probably it didn't, that one's been sprayed first with uh, this little bottle, the red one there. But this one I just, I do one side and then I let it dry and then I flip the other side and I sprayed it in there. But it's much deeper. The, it looks it looks like black cherry. And, more than, and you get splotching just yeah, from using right. that. Yeah. Yeah. There's no spray gun on that. There is, there is rattle can lacquer over the top. And that's that one. Oh, we'll go this way with this one. Um, when you torch it, uh, uh, when you torch it, do you then scrub it all off? Uh, I'm sorry? Once you um, torch it with uh, the propane, then right. you have oh, to scrub I'm sorry. it off? Very good question. Here's my tool of choice. You could use brass, but this one, you want to go with the grain because if you have lines across it, and maybe you'll like them that way. It's up to you. But if you brush with it, you'll you'll take it out of the grain much quicker on that one. This is just a wire brush. Um, welders use them all the time, but they're sold in any big box store on that. So that's a good way to do it there. This bowl here is oh, probably 20 years old. And it's hard maple. And I had a wonderful time carving <laughs> <laughs> these little the, uh, indentations in here. The uh, holes, the smaller holes, are done with a nail set, automatic nail set. Push it in, push it in, and just follow it all the way around. I do not measure these. I never measure bowls. All I do is run it across this way. I will figure 90 degrees this way. From that point, I'll take the, the middle center, take the center, take the center, and pretty much eyeball them, the whole thing that way. Um, it just uh, works very well that way. The other thing is now, you'll notice the inside seems to be a lot more red in it. Look at the outside. It has more black showing in it. So I sprayed the inside with more red, but I did not spray it as heavy on the outside. So when you hold that bowl different directions, it sometimes looks like ruby red, and it changes back and forth on that. So it's an interesting thing to work that way. Um, okay. Bob, when you mix that up in the spray bottle, does that get any kind of shelf life to it? Or? I'm sorry? When oh, you got a bottle works. with that mixed up in it, are you trying to use that up right away, or do you have... No, it's been in here 10 days. I'll be on here. I just add some more to it. And, <laughs> and uh, work it that way. It's I do lacquer. thin the lacquer down. It's lacquer? This was lacquer, yeah. I use a lot of lacquers. Um, it dries quick, so it really is easy to use. But these bottles do not uh, deteriorate. Um, matter of fact, right here is a lemon. This is lemon lacquer, yellow, yellow trans tint put in this bottle and some 50-50 uh, lacquer, maybe 60-40, depending on it like that. So 60-40 the, the 60 uh, of thinner, 40 of lacquer, depending on how much you want to shoot it, how much powder you're putting in it. You just got to guess. It's no, there's no real measurements here. But what I want to tell you is that sprayer with a straw, a, just a, like find a straw that fits um, I'm trying to think, uh, Myers might have one, there. and it's just a, a soda straw, and stick it on the end there. The threads on that fit right on here. So I have bottles for alcohol, things like that. Just, you want more of it in there, you want to do, you just do it like that when you're doing, you know, you could, you could take this off, find a, the lid off of here probably fits on there too. So you want to switch this over to here, you unscrew it and put it back on. Um, I use a lot of Pepsi bottles. Pepsi is much better than Coke. <laughs> Excuse me. I'm not offending Coke people, I hope. Um, 
It's better for storing oil. If you have um, antique oil, or you have some kind of, even your polyurethanes, put your polyurethane in a Pepsi bottle and then squeeze the air out of it. This bottle, you can almost flatten this bottle and squeeze all that stuff out of there, the air, and then you lock it back up again. All right? How the heck did I do that? This is a Pepsi bottle, but it's certainly not 16 ounces anymore. I was playing with my heat, uh, <coughs> heat gun. If you take that Pepsi bottle, you want to get a label off a Pepsi bottle, just take a heat gun like this. It just almost falls off. Try to take it off with a fingernail, you're there scraping the stuff out of there and the glue and everything else. So it, 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 it would, you could flatten it if you want, but uh, I don't know, that, that's what came out just going like this. Moving it around the bottle and they didn't go up by the lid because I didn't want to lose the threads on it. On that one. Okay. Um, we did that with nothing in it though, right? Pardon me? The bottle was empty when you did that. Oh yeah. Don't no, 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 no Pepsi in it either. I took care of the Pepsi long before that. Okay. Yeah. Just wanted to make and, sure that and water right. The reason I talk a little bit about putting your oils in there and stuff, you can go buy the collapsible bags and they were like what, six dollars a bag to take the oxygen out of it? Or, or the blow blow blow? Blow X, better. Well, you can blow it in. Spray it in there, yeah. You spray it in there, put the lid on quickly. No, you still got half a can, <laughs> half a can of something in there. You got to, as soon as you open up, you lost that. But putting in a Pepsi bottle, squeeze the Pepsi bottle down, and you're good. This now, what's the a, difference between a Pepsi bottle and a Coca Cola bottle? The Coke bottle is, is harder to flatten. Oh, okay. This is just, the there's nothing types here. Of plastics. Yeah, if you look at one of the water bottles, the water bottles, there's nothing there. That's it, it's really thin. Mm -hmm. But the Pepsi bottle, you can make it pretty flat before you have, I'll only have about an ounce in a bottle like this before I pour it in the other bottle, fill that one back up with them. But the only way to go with it, with that, instead of those bags are expensive. This is just a peanut, peanut, uh, Flanders peanut bottle. And this has lacquer in it but it's been in there for three weeks, at least, and it still works fine. No problem with it. Not there, but uh, another way of storing it. Make sure you label it if you don't mix them up. Um, you see what I have here? I have it on, on masking tape and I wrote on it, and then I covered that with the packaging tape just to make sure it doesn't get in there on that one. Okay, um, talk a little bit about the candy apple stuff here. As Bill knows well, you can make your own. If you have red, you make candy apple red. This is getting harder to find. Yeah, you can't find it anymore. Very, very few of them. I bought this, I think, boy, probably Hobby Lobby some years ago. On yeah, that one. Years ago. I have red, blue, and purple. Um, if you go maybe in a hobby shop, you might find it. Mm -hmm. No? Yeah. Auto store. You, you scattered it all out for us, huh? I've been looking all over for it. I have another one, dupl Dupla Color. Same product as that one. Yeah, it's the same company. Ryan makes both of them. Yeah, that's a bit sad thing. But anyway, get your, <laughs> get your red trans tint, put it in there a little bit, thin down your lacquer enough. And you can use one of those. You can use your gun, which we'll talk a little bit about this one. This is Bill's go-to, go-to spray gun. And he could buy any spray gun. He's got all kinds of them, sure. But this is Harbor Freight, what, $20 now? 25 30 yeah. Yeah, 23 something. Like your club member, you get it cheaper, of course, and so forth. Wait for one of the coupon sales. Just they don't have coupon keep, sales anymore. Yeah, Tom. I got coupons. Twenty percent off this week. In Harbor Freight. Yeah. Twenty percent off something out of that. Anyway, they have two different levels of this. I don't. I don't know if the cheaper one works quite as well as this one. But the good one on this one, you have a regulator on the bottom. 
it comes with that? Pardon me? It comes with that? Yeah. It comes with the regulator, so this is a very, pretty decent box. You have to buy the connection, of course, on there and on that one, but uh, I have a couple of these. And it, the regulator is nice. I don't have to go to my big compressor and turn it down and stuff, play with it. I got this right on the knob. I can work that way with it on it. But uh, for the money, we're not painting cars, so it doesn't have to be fancy. Approximately how much was it? 23, 20, I don't know. Oh. Google it, you got a phone. Yeah. <laughs> Everything else. What kind of pressure do you Yeah, what kind of pressure? Uh, what pressure do you run off the regulator? Depends on what you got in it. If you oh, put okay. alcohol in there, it doesn't take much at all. Yeah. You put alcohol with powder in there, a little more. If you have alcohol with lacquer in there, is if it's 50-50, it's gonna take, you know, you might go 40. Mm -hmm. I don't know, yeah, but what usually happens, you crank it up too much, it, it bounces right off the, the object you're trying yeah, to paint. Yeah, you can only feel it or something. Yeah, it just it goes off like this. You can spray powder through that too, though? Pardon me? You can spray powder through it? Powder, yes. Okay. Yeah, I've done that a number of times. Matter of fact, some of those bowls, the early ones, were done with that on there. Usually um, I walk over to my drywall and I spray spawn. Oh, no, change it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you get it right when you go to the good? No. <laughs> Does this have the two stage where you pull and it gets air and then you pull it and then it shoots? It's, I believe it's a two stage, yeah. yeah. Not like a, a airbrush, single stage airbrush. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you have no controls for much of anything on those things. I would just soon use one of those on that one. I want to put a plug in here too for, for Mohawk. And Mohawk, this is, they've changed it from Finisher's Choice. Now sell this as Ultra Flow Clear Lacquer. It's crystal clear, water white lacquer. And it, it, Mohawk, it works very well. It uh, is not that much thinner in here. You get a good coat when you use this. The only thing you have to be careful with when you first spray a full can, you can get runs if you don't move quick enough. So you just go like that with it. Valens, I believe, is the same. Seems like we have a very similar product to Valens and the other guys. Okay. Do not buy this at Rockler. <laughs> Do not buy that product at Rockler. Like, what do you want? Eighteen bucks for that now? Yeah. Yeah, it's it's eighteen dollars, I think, at Rockler. Yeah, so you can get it through Cleans for for. Things for is nine, I think now with so, shipping. Oh wow! Well. Half yeah, price. Yeah, you buy buy six cans. Yeah, yeah. And you use it up. Um, other than that, Bobby orders every month. You can if you if you're buying lacquer in a can, they call it brushing lacquer. Brushing lacquer is basically it's got a retarder in it to slow down a drying process. So you can spray it. I sprayed brushing lacquer a number of times, but. It's just going to take longer to dry. It's not so good on vertical surfaces if you overspray. Yeah, it tends to run more than it wants to slide down. Every time I did uh, quite a bit of cabinetry uh, when I was younger, all my kitchen cabinets are done. My my kitchen table is that lacquer. My four poster bed is lacquer. It's all, but they lay it flat and spray it. It's not a problem. But when you're doing verticals, you know, it can become Become more of a challenge there. Okay, now I got one more subject before we really get. We're going to use some of that though too. This is um, flat flat twine, saran wrap, whatever you want to call these things. And I just wad it up in a ball, put some tape on the back of it, and I can stamp with this. Why would I use this? You can see what I use it for. I tried things out on it. That way, yeah, yeah. This is alcohol. Okay, so you want to use a mica powder and you want to put it on a bowl and I didn't bring my knife. I'm trying not to put too much. Mm -hmm. Must be pointing the other way. There we go. 
So now I'm going to put some, and I got a puddle. If I hold it up, it's going to run. But I got a puddle. I got to work fairly quickly, but I can cut this down as the penny. See the powder sitting over here? If I dab the powder, I'm going to get more on there. I think that one's not as good as the other one. I see why. I'm using the wrong end. <laughs> So now I have it on there like that. Yeah, you can see I can make patterns. I can overlap them. Depending on how much I want in there, I can mix more the alcohol with it, make it more transparent. And this will dry. You see, I can make patterns. I can overlap them. Depending on how much I want in there, I can mix more the alcohol with it, make it more transparent, and this will dry very quickly. Um, you can blow this out if you want, or just get a hold of something to use it up a little bit. Now I can use that knife. Make up your Frank, you got one? <laughs> Well, we got a lot of knife carriers around here, don't we? <coughs> oh, cool. oh, oh, I like this girl. Yeah. These are little. Carvers, my carvers. Yeah. Oh, the scary. I'll leave this over here in case I want to go another one. <coughs> now we got powder there. Spray a little alcohol over here. Mm. And you can see it mixing around a little here. We just can change the colors. It won't be quite as red as it would be the other way, but. And now you got little red roses amongst them. I'll tell you what. Just be careful in passing it around and you see it all there. And when you're done with this, you pinch them if you want. Alternative sponge. If you happen to live in Florida for a while, you might be able to come home with some sponges. Hint, hint, turn on that one. That'll work. And then you also you have feathers. And sometimes you might want to ruffle the feather up a little more. Chop the end off there. Dip it in your finish, and rub it around a little bit, pull it, things like that. And then you use a sponge, wet it with water before you use it. No matter what you're using it in, it softens it up. And the feather? The um, sponge. The sponge, yeah. yeah, yeah. <coughs> sponge is, uh, this, these sponges are they're like this, that's pretty stiff. Yeah, wet them and they'll But use your imagination sometimes. Um, pipe cleaner, I'm not exactly sure what this pipe cleaner does, but it's a little different than a normal pipe cleaner. But you can use these things, fold it in half, and do a little bit here and there. Use it as a brush. And you can dry brush this, by the way, if you just, uh, Dip it on the powder and put it somewhere, and then put it on your brush. And you can use a brush and just brush it in different ways on there. I also have a number of glitter products. This one's pretty fine glitter. Um, yeah, real pretty fine. These are probably 128th, hundredth of an inch, maybe. That were way down there. On that one, poly poly flake, very close. It's a little heavier than the ice from Rockler, but that uh, that you can mix in with stuff too. Again, um, how far you want to go and how far you want to play with them. So let's see if we can get some of this going up there. Blue. 
I'm going to paint this all blue first. You notice it's not, it's not, not a whole lot of technique here. Just don't pull it all the way back. Just shake it up. I'm getting too much alcohol and not enough paint. And make sure you wear a glove. If you have a fan, it would burn the fan. Beats this. And turn your legs upside down and run around the race. <laughs> <laughs> With a fan. <laughs> Now that's almost dry right now. And that's lacquer in that one, right? Mm. Lacquer. No, this is alcohol. This one's all alcohol. Ah, it's a different smell on that, but you get the look of it. It's what you know, it's getting deeper blue, more blue on it, more like that. So uh, where'd my red one go? The red one here. There we go. Thank you, young lady. I'll tell you a story. I, I, my mom was in a nursing home, and I used to go visit her, and there would be all these elderly ladies in a row. And I would walk in, and they'd all look up and smile at me. I thought I was in the dating game or something. You know, they want to talk to you. And my wife walked in. A couple minutes later, she walked in. <laughs> they wouldn't even look at her. <laughs> the hormones are still going. <laughs> now remember, don't pull that trigger back too hard. <laughs> <laughs> run, Don, run. <laughs> I don't want to see. I don't want to get in the back row here, Don. Yeah. I hit you? Yeah, a couple times. <laughs> I'd explain that one. That's an interactive display. Uh, <laughs> yeah, right. Now this is lacquer. It'll take a little bit longer. Um, you can push it. Air gun works well. Getting lightheaded. Whee! The straw. Remember the straw? Depending on how much you have in there. Um, let's see if we can dial it back a little more. Get it to, no, that's the wrong way. Still the wrong way. Spray. Tighter yet. Come on. There we go. Now what you saw just then was about what you want. Trying to dry the lacquer, don't get all over the inside. And then, there's my spit. Now, the red does not show quite as well on her blue like this. And uh, put enough on there, I suppose you're gonna get some brown. There's enough green in there. Now. But you're starting to see where it's drying. There's a very kind of neat overtone of red over the, the bluish. And it's, and it's try not to get your fingers painted up too much. On there. Um, this, this bowl here was done with a dry brush. And it pulled in that way. And I don't know. What you can do is dip the brush in, put it in the lid, like that, and now you can use the powder on it that way. And you could follow the grain. You could have a base color underneath this, if you like. 
Bill does a great demo with marbling like this. And I believe that some of that's on the Hickory Hills uh, YouTube page. What did I just do? I blew off of the excess. If you get it too thick, you don't like it so much. I could blow it all away in one quick poof. Bob, can I ask you, how do you keep the inside clean without, you know, even when you're um, torching it or with the colors, you, you don't have to prep the inside or anything like you that? You could, no? you could. Um, when I do these, these bowls, here's the best part of the whole gimmick here. When you do these bowls like this, I don't sand any less than uh, 120. Mm. So I can go, if, you know, depending if it's wet or not, but uh, when I'm ready to burn it, I don't have, it'd be ridiculous to sand it away down to 600 because you really, it's going to take most of it away anyway. So, yeah. And um, so when I did this bowl originally yesterday, it was, um, I only sanded a 120 on the inside and the outside. So when I came back today, I sanded the inside out. What I did was, was burn it. If anything would have got on my fingers or anything on that side, um, I burned it and then I, I took clear lacquer and sprayed it. That sealed the finish because it comes off the carbon be all over your fingers. And then I sanded the inside out all the way to 600 on here. But, um, okay, my rattle can lacquer. Here's my rattle can. Boy, you just have a <laughs> We have a stand over there. <laughs> this is going to stink a little bit. When you do this kind of work, if you have, if it, whether it's all colored or what, do not put the spray can here. Just back up. Need one of those timing clocks. It's just kind of too long with me here. And you'll notice the colors aren't moving much. Now that's pretty well put in. So you can put some more on there, whatever you want to do with them. And eventually you get to the point when you want to finish it. That's enough to seal it. Anybody getting snippies in there? You see, when I'm, I'm doing it, I have a big turning cable that'll hold a dresser or something, but then I have a little turning cable. You pick up a little lazy suit, a couple pieces of plywood. You can put a piece of paper on it, tape it on. When it gets too dirty, you throw it away, put a new piece on. But that way you can spin it, spray it, spin it, spray it. And you, you don't uh, mess yeah. up. I have a metal metal stool. Yeah. And I did my whole kitchen cabinet sitting on that thing to spray it. Yeah. Take it off, put another one on, and spray it. And that way. But here, it, this is just maybe a beginning. You don't, you don't have to stop because you just sealed it. You like that, so it's in. You're done with that. There's this Okinawa blue on that one. Wisteria so you purple. You could use orange tiger. Wisteria purple over here. Pardon me? Purple, there. Yeah, I'm just looking, I got here. Tiger. Put a little tiger in your tank. Looks kind of like that one. You don't have to spend a lot of time cleaning brushes. Thin's brush also that can be used here. Oh, I wish I had some artistic abilities. You are 
art here. <laughs> By the way, my brother is an art teacher. My daughter's artistic. I have a nephew that's artistic. I got zip. <laughs> I couldn't pass penmanship. And when you do colors like that, you could put them somewhat over and do other things with them. It's put something right down the middle. Boom. And then you go to your next color if you want. If you don't like it, take the air pressure, wherever you got, you can use a vacuum cleaner if you want, and take that off and go to the next one. So it's just about that quick. It will take you about four coats of lacquer on here to get a very good finish to it. I don't run out of lacquer. And these are, I want to say, similar colors. Yeah, that's right. Hold your nose. <laughs> Almost drop it. No great loss. You almost get a shirt pattern yeah. on it. By the way, that um, yeah, elm, there's some of it back here, and it turns really pretty nice. Does it? For, yeah. for, it, sands, for, it sands well, too. You say for as stringy as it was when we were cutting it up. That's yeah. Nice. It, uh, That's I had no trouble with it. And, Another uh, thing on top of your little lazy Susan, you save your old plastic coffee cups and stuff, and you put them on, and their bowls go on top of them. And it gives you a nice uh, angle you can get on that side. Oh, okay, so you can get the bio there. Any other questions? Anybody wants either one of those bowls? You got your spray bottles from Amazon? Pardon me? You got the, spray, the plastic spray bottles? These, yeah. From the Amazon. Amazon. My wife has the account, so I just tell her what I want. And yeah. Orders them. Um, I'm sure they come in different sizes, different companies. They had a whole kind yeah. of them. But uh, as I say, once you dial them in, it seems to you can spray it. And the beauty of lacquer is that it uh, dries quick enough. You can put another layer on it. And, oh, I've used I've used the electric spray guns, and they're a little That's more okay. uh, beady. They're not as fine as a, a compressor. The low pressure, high volume ones, you can use those. Uh, maybe, but for this kind of work, this seems to work pretty well on that one. Were those bottles labeled as far as the material or? Do I label the bottles? No, no. no. Were the bottles when you bought them, were they advertised as a certain type of plastic or no? No, all this stuff is, uh, doesn't seem to make any difference. I said this one's from Menards, and it does very well. Yeah, costs a little more, I'm sure. Another dollar for that one. Probably.